I guess I've always just been looking for a way to quiet my mind. Really, the first time this girl gave me a, Nor a, a Vicodin on a bus on the way to a school trip, that's the day I'll never forget. Jeez, I, I, I must have been uh, maybe 14. And then it just slowly progressed from there. One time I crashed my dad's car into my friend's garage, like I came in too hot. I was just crazy. Yeah, towards the end when it started getting really bad, I was drinking and taking Xanax and Oxycontin. I mean, you would think that after you hit somebody and um, get away with it, you would sort of like be careful for the rest of the ride home, especially considering that you're like totally wasted, but I didn't. My using got completely out of control and everybody in my life, my close friends and my family, sort of cut me off and they said, listen, if you're not willing to get sober, we don't want to have anything to do with you. You're crashing cars, you're getting DUIs, you're, you're, you're drooling at the computer, embarrassing us in front of like other artists and musicians. And um, once I finally decided to go, um, my, my now wife, Veronica, um, girlfriend at the time, called my mom and they both drove me to rehab and on the way there we got we went to the bar and we got like a bunch of Long Island iced teas and I took a couple somas and I checked into a, a, a treatment center like high out of my mind. I got sober when I was 21. I mean, that was when I finally admitted to somebody that my life was a mess and that person happened to be somebody who, who knew of a really amazing place that, that really saved my life. And I still, to this day, with 16 years sober, have to work a program. After I got sober, I immediately started chasing my career and I got, I achieved my dreams. Yeah, I, I was in a group called Hyper Crush and we got a record deal with Universal Motown. This was shortly after I got sober. I sort of, I, 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 I feel like I want to say I replaced addictions and I, and I went as hard into the music as I did the drugs and alcohol. It worked. We were like number one on MySpace and like got a record deal with Universal and I, we did a tour with Lady Gaga in Europe and we put out three albums. I mean we toured the US multiple times and um, we were going to be the new Black Eyed Peas, you know, and, and we like, I feel like we came as close as you can come to becoming a household name before the label fell apart. Once I lost success and fame, which is what I thought defined me, I realized it never did and it never will. I think that's like what we do as alcoholics and addicts is we, we chase things, regardless of whether we're sober or not, to make us feel better. And I chase, you know, success, money, <clears throat> and um, popularity. Freedom is just another word for nothing left to lose. These things that I was attached to, that I thought defined me, it's an illusion. I, 
I think the biggest message for me to anyone that's like struggling to get sober is surrender is like the first step in like the therapeutic process. And surrender doesn't come unless you've been like beaten down. Like if I can get sober, anyone can get sober. It can be amazing. And I never thought I could go for hours, let alone days, and I have 16 years. It's crazy, like anyone can do this. You just have to ask for help.